Welcome to Wesley Impact. I'm Keith Garner. What do you do when you have a bag full of groceries and you see a homeless person in need? Welcome to Wesley Impact and the second of five episodes where we look at a cross-section of our work throughout Wesley Mission and particularly in the city centre. Today we'll be looking at our work called Wesley Connect where we provide food to the homeless but offer much more than just a meal. Lucy Parker from Wesley Connect will join us to talk a little more about that. We'll be joined by Jordan Warner who will sing Beautifully Made and we see the second part of the Lifeline story. And I'll be also sharing some thoughts from the beginning of Matthew 6. Wesley Congregational Life is so much a part of everything that we do at Wesley Mission. It has a particular importance in its relationship with our deed ministry also. Today we'll see how word and deed together make sense in Wesley Connect. And the second part of our Wesley Lifeline story. In just 10 years of operation, Lifeline had become global. The Christian telephone service was now up and running in almost every capital city in the country and affiliated with more than 100 cities worldwide. The 1970s and 80s saw Lifeline expand to meet specialised caller demand. And our legacy lives on. Youthline, now Kids Helpline, responds to more than 6,000 calls a week. Ethnic Lifeline evolved into a state government initiative and at Wesley Mission, our commitment to help people get out of debt continues with specialised programs and ongoing one-to-one -one gambling and financial counselling support. We also continue to lead the way in suicide prevention and training through Wesley Life Force and support family and friends left behind through annual suicide memorial services. With suicide, people need the patient love of those around them to throw their arms around them and say, we're on this journey with you. We're certainly making a difference. Um, we know from the feedback from people who've attended our training who have said that often not long after they've attended our training they've been able to intervene with somebody who was perhaps suicidal because they recognised the signs and they were uh, secure in the process, they knew what to do. I think it's an absolute privilege to be a part of Wesley Mission. I found that it's a genuine um, focus on everybody here to do all the good they can, all the time they can. And I think people really believe and live that. Today, Lifeline has been established in 19 countries Hello, around the world. In Australia, you? Lifeline centres answered a record 141,450 calls in 2012, thanks to a dedicated team of 1,000 staff and 11,000 volunteers across 60 locations nationwide. The volunteer is the heartbeat of Lifeline. When we interview them initially or, you know, they fill in a form, it will be, I want to give back. A lot of people that, that stay at Lifeline are usually people who have been touched by suicide themselves and they've been called to it. I'm just really, really grateful that Alan Walker did start Lifeline. If you watch any program on TV, you'll, you know, any problems, it's phone Lifeline. And it's amazing that it's become such an integral part of our society. If you would like to see more of the work of Wesley Mission, visit wesleymission.org.au. You can watch loads more videos, catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact TV, find out about our diverse range of services and get involved to help make a positive difference in your community. You can also connect with us on social media and stay up to date on the latest news and information from Wesley Mission. wesleymission.org.au As I mentioned earlier in the show, we have a new program at Wesley Mission. We call it Wesley Connect. It picks up components of what we did before, but puts a new twist and a deeper dimension on it. This programme brings together our Word and Deed ministry in a unique way. And to tell us a little bit more about that is the manager of Wesley Connect, Lucy Parker. 
Lucy, thanks for joining oh, us. Thank you for having me. Look, what is Wesley Connect then? Uh, Wesley Connect is a place where somebody can come along who is having uh, a, a tough time in life and uh, receive non-perishable food items that they can select, but mainly for care, the care aspect. Um, what we've seen over the last few years in um, giving food and looking at other um, agencies that give food, um, that the care component is often missing. So often when people come along, um, every person that comes in is treated with you know, humility and kindness and um, we listen. And that is the emphasis. The care is the emphasis mm. in what we do. And it's, it's not a case of just passing a voucher over and no, all, here we are, no, that's what you get. No. I mean, some people want to come in and go yeah. straight away, but that's maybe because of embarrassment. But um, the emphasis is on care, and we, we're we um, part of an amazing volunteer team mm. um, who are very dedicated and um, compassionate people who, um, who share a love for Christ and really want to work um, in that ministry to care for others. How real is the need? Um, the need, we at the moment, we are seeing around 130 people a month and we're open four days a week, um, Tuesday through Friday at this time. Um, and there is a need, I think isolation being the, the most need. And we see all sorts of different people coming in. Um, every single person is different, not mm. the, um, the, the typical what people think is, uh, you know, a man begging on the street corner. Homelessness affects families, mm -hmm. seniors, um, drug and alcohol um, addicted people, um, domestic violence, family violence. So we see many people from all of those walks of life mm -hmm. come through our door and um, we meet them where they're at. We listen and we're able to connect them with um, other programmes within Wesley Mission. Sure, mm -hmm. that's important because if somebody's mm -hmm. got an alcohol addiction problem, yes. we can ring somebody up and say, look, this is the person you Absolutely, need to see. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Look, so where does the food and goods come from then? Oh, wow, well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, all the food um, is 100% donated. Um, so through our congregations at Wesley Congregational Life, um, the, the Scouts and the Rover Scouts, the Cubs, many schools, outdoor education centres and also corporate groups. We, um, we've just really in the last few years started to um, engage the community of our corporate um, network and they often come in and we present um, what it's like to be marginalised and show them a few testimonies of um, people that Wesley Mission and the different programmes have So helped. that's the other side of this, isn't it? Yes. Trying to engage with people and help them to see that you can actually help others. Yeah, you can help other people. And it, the, during this presentation, um, they are challenged. Um, they have a certain amount of money with children. They bring their $5 with the corporate groups. They have their $10. And we give them a scenario, which is based on a real life scenario of someone doing it tough. And they go to the local supermarket and mm. um, have to buy food for three days yes. with that $10. And it's quite thought provoking for a lot of um, people in the corporate world who haven't had um, much exposure with what it's like to be marginalised. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I was talking to somebody in one of our shows who, who found themselves, as it were, at wit's end, mm. you know, and the, the amount of money that they survived on with their food was mm. very, very small. Yes. Definitely. Look, it's not just food, though, is it? You, no. you, you, you may have people who have other than physical needs that come in. Definitely, yes. Um, we, um, we often have women that come in that may need um, toiletries and a safe place to, to go. And fortunately, we know where those places might be and the, the right type of counselling that people need and we can mm. refer on. Um, Toiletries, um, the food is a, is definitely a big one. And but you've also got people probably who've got mental health issues. Is that a, a real yes. challenge? Um, it is a challenge, and that's where um, the the team of volunteers and myself we love what we do, but we have to have a great deal of patience and understanding. And I think a lot of people in general are afraid of people with severe mental health problems and when we have a deeper understanding of that um, from depression right through to um, 
more severe forms of mental health. I remember a conversation mm. with somebody in a church when they were talking about this and they say, and we said, we need a safe place. Mm. And I think they thought I meant a safe place from mental health. Mm. I said, no, no, a safe place for people with mental yeah. health issues mm -hmm. to be able to go and find friendship. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the, the, the things that, that come across in terms of counsel? Do people ask questions or, or do things emerge? Um, so very often, we, with the food, for example, if we see people quite frequently um, and we get to know them, um, they often share their circumstances. And what we don't want to do is create a dependency. We want to want to help people out of a cycle of um, being marginalised and whatever that looks like. Um, so we provide options to, for example, Wesley Financial Counselling, mm. um, different Brighter Futures being one of the um, many programmes for, um, facilitated through Wesley Mission um, to help families. So it really depends on the individual person and, and how we, um, how we and can help. And for you, faith matters, doesn't it? Definitely, yes. I've just seen the the miracles that go on, um, which can be quite humorous as well. So last week, someone donated two quite new um, walking sticks. They'd been in hospital rehabilitation. So we were given these and we, you know, took them thinking we'll never use these but thank you for the donation and the very next morning um, a, ge a gentleman rang through and said look um, this is a very strange request do you have a walking <laughs> stick uh, and we were able to meet that need and he was just so grateful so mm. you know it's just for me, that's God providing the need before the, um, sorry, providing before the need. Yeah, sure. Uh, so many things happen like that and we're able to um, pray with people mm. if they want that. Mm. And um, Because it's not one of our government provided programmes, yes. uh, we can really offer faith and we're just yes. grateful for people like yes. yourselves, Lucy. And especially that, walking alongside somebody yes. over several months and then yeah. actually seeing God working through their lives mm. and um, yeah a few people have, have come to faith as a result which is uh, is amazing you know they've actually found peace in uh, the middle of their circumstances. Thanks ever so much Lucy Thank for you. sharing with us and certainly uh, many of us will continue praying for the work that's there. Thank you. And a single appropriate song that shares the heartbeat of Wesley Connect uh, and the people that we seek to serve. Welcome Jordan Warner with Beautifully Made. What I give is not my own There's a father who loves you Won't let you go when you doubt you unnoticed Do you give up hope he is singing over you? Every word he said is true Like a star that is burning way into the night Like an eagle Soaring high into flight, he has fashioned and formed you and breathed you a life beyond your dreams. And wherever you wander, it's never too far. Like a melody written inside of his heart, it's a simple and unchanging fact that you are so fearfully, wonderfully. Lovingly, beautifully made. So this song is yours to own for the joy and the heartache and questions you'll know when it all overwhelms you. And fear takes a hold, he's still singing over you. Like an eagle that's soaring high into flight, he has fashioned and formed you, breathed you a life beyond your dreams. And wherever you wander, it's never too far. Like a melody written inside of his heart, it's a simple and unbelievable. 
unchanging fact that you are so fearfully, wonderfully, and lovingly, beautifully made. Love never leaves you, and love won't forsake you. Love walks the road with you. Love is your healer, restorer, believe he makes all things new. Like a star that is burning way into the night Like an eagle that's soaring high into flight He has fashioned and formed you and breathed you a life beyond your dreams And wherever you wander it's never too far You're the melody written inside of his heart It's a simple changing fact that you are so fearfully wonderfully lovingly beautifully made oh. it's been 200 years since the first Methodists met in Australia to celebrate two centuries of faith and pioneering care, CEO and presenter Reverend Dr Keith Garner takes us back to where it all began. But we don't begin here at the heart of London. We begin in a town in the north of England. In this fascinating narrative, Reverend Garner chronicles the history of the life and times of the founder of Methodism, John Wesley. This fresh and thought-provoking documentary takes us on a journey throughout the United Kingdom, beginning in John Wesley's hometown of Epworth. John Wesley was born here on the 17th of June, 1703. This one-hour DVD travels on to his education years and beginnings of social justice in Oxford, to his final years in London. For more information on John Wesley, the man and his mission, call 02 9263 5555 or email us at impacttv at .org .au. Just last week, we began a series in the Sermon on the Mount and we looked at the Beatitudes of Jesus, which open up really the whole of that sermon, which whether one sermon or a set of gathered teachings was so important as a beginning. Today, I'm moving into the second chapter because it's chapters five, six and seven in Matthew. But before I do that, we want to remind ourselves that Jesus portrayed in the Beatitudes the essential elements of Christian character. Then he went on to speak about the metaphors of salt and light, which have been very powerfully understood down the years and replicated by the way the Christian faith has been taught. And they point to the fact that Christians are meant to be an influence for good in the world. Then we have a collation of different kinds of practical issues about laws as they were and as they are now in the kingdom of God. We get this, once it was and now I say to you, but the fifth chapter closes with a powerful injunction for us to love our enemies. I know of nothing more challenging, nothing more difficult when Jesus lays before us that we're not only to, to love each other as those we like, but we're to love our enemies. So then we turn to what I'm going to read to you today, which are the first four verses in chapter 6 of Matthew's Gospel. Matthew 6, verses 1 through to 4. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you'll have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or on the streets, to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Now, the sixth chapter begins with what the Bible calls righteousness. The emphasis, you see, now shifts to religious matters. Righteousness is not just doing a favour, it is a relational thing with God and the way we live out that life. We've had a picture of what kindness and purity might look like. But Jesus suggests that our giving to the needy uh, and, and doing things for others in the same way that we've heard in the earlier interview with Lucy, uh, those practical things, our prayers and our fasting, that inner uh, discipline of our lives, should have a special character. 
And the main thought for me in this passage is that we should not be treating our, our religion as something that we show off before others. I love that, that, that picture that Jesus says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. What a wonderful picture. How many people, when they do things for others, want people to say, no, I'm not bragging about this, but only yesterday I was helping somebody. That's not the Jesus way. You don't need to let anybody know what you're doing. You just do it. So word and deed is about doing, not showing off. And the insistent call of Jesus throughout the Sermon on the Mount is that we should not be parading our piety. And any thought that the way we live is better than others should not be a public demonstration. Clearly, if we live in Christ, then, then surely we, we will be different and new and fresh. That's the work of the Spirit of God in our lives. But it's not a performance. And these words are not a contradiction to the earlier point, though they might at first appear to be so. ABB Bruce wrote this, show me when tempted to hide and hide me when tempted to show. You see, I think that this real secret is important. It's perhaps the, the point of difference, we'd say, uh, in today's thinking of the Christian way and contribution to living. We, we are those people who want to live close to Christ, but at the same time, we are those people who know that it ought to be lived out in practical ways towards others. Christian giving should be so much more than mere generosity. It should have within it a deep compassion. Now, Wesley Connect that we've talked about just a few moments ago, in that particular programme, there's the, the connection, not just with the people we meet, but the connection with those who offer support and help and practical gifts, because they're making a connection with people in need. It's far too tempting to poke fun at the early Jewish leaders. And, and we, I've heard it said many, many times, you know, about the Pharisees, you know, a picture of them, almost as if they've got their nose turned up and they're all crouched in and they're, they're making judgments on others. Jesus didn't want that to be uh, our attitude of the Pharisees, but there were those who were so caught up in law, so caught up in demonstrating how good they were, that they lost the real secrets of the kingdom. Kingdom. The kingdom of God, which turns our values upside down, offers to us the opportunity to be new and different people. And when we talk about being new and different in the world, that new and different attitude is expressed towards others. And it's a, a, a compassionate attitude. It's a, something that moves deep within us, where our hearts go out to people. And when your heart goes out to people, other things follow. What you do, what you are, what you give, what you're able to be to enable people to find change. So where the Sermon on the Mount began, with this wonderful picture of the beatitude, attitudes, the change that, that ought to be true, the different values by which we live, are now, when we come to chapter 6, expressed in a new way of living. Because the Holy Spirit gives to Christians a new heart and a new purpose, then it's also true that the way that the heart and purpose is lived out makes a, this world a remarkably clean field of opportunity as people can be changed. And they're often changed by compassion. You know, one of the things that I observe when people come into Wesley Connect or whether they make some link with any of our services is not that we set out uh, fundamentally to prove this, but people are changed by kindness. People are changed when real connections take place in their lives. So this whole business of not letting people know what we're doing simply becomes the way in which God operates in people's lives as God himself reaches out to others through us. And as he reaches out, as he touches, and as he makes people new and fresh, so they are changed. I think it's wonderful. I think it's amazing. And if you were to say to me, what's one of the reasons why you're part and parcel of Wesley Mission? I would have to say, because I believe this is what really matters. When we reach out and we make connection with people and in that connection, we offer the opportunity of a brand new life and a new opportunity to grow in Christ. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. I wonder if it's something that challenges you and the way that you're living too. 
If you would like to contact Keith and find out more about today's program, write to us at Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235, or you can send an email to impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. On our website, you can catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact, find out more about our work, read online magazines and articles, and connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube. You can also connect to Keith's blog and stay up to date on all of the latest news and information from Wesley Mission. WesleyMission.org.au well, Thank you for joining us today. Please don't hesitate to write and be in touch if you've got questions or comments on today's programme. And don't forget that Wesley Connect seeks to help physical and spiritual needs of all who enter our doors. And if you'd like to contribute to the work, please don't hesitate to contact us. The email address is impacttv at wesleymission.org.au or the website as usual, wesleymission.org.au. Please do join us next week for another edition of Wesley Impact. Until then, thank you and God bless you. Wesley Mission helps more than 2,400 people each year through Wesley Homeless Services. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.